Ah, you got it. Coming up, as 2016 skates away into history, oh. what people see ahead for themselves. My goal is to get straight A's next semester. Being healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yeah taking care of our neighbors and brothers and sisters. New Year's resolutions, so easy to make, even harder to keep. But Dan Bigley says, take risks, live large. The bigger my life gets, the, the sort of problems get smaller and smaller, and so they become less significant. Just ahead, advice from a man who survived a bear attack. Why he believes that if you live with love, you can meet some of life's toughest challenges. Sponsorship for Frontiers with Rhonda McBride is provided by your local Alaska Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Happy New Year's and welcome to our program. This week we explore how to conquer our personal frontiers and I just couldn't resist bringing out this old crystal ball to ask some of you what you hope to accomplish in 2017. The twilight of 2016 at Westchester Lagoon. A day of mist and mystery. Time to consider the coming year. Every day, one thing at a time. Just one piece at a time. If you look at the big picture for too long, it'll overwhelm you. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to move that puck a little bit at a time to reach your goal. So what do you see for yourself for the next year? Well, I see myself eating better, taking better care of myself. And there's Lori Olson's little friend, Molly. She looks cute, but she bites. She does. Yeah, so that's that's her New Year's resolution. She says, I'm going to try to bite less. And right? fight less, <laughs> one of Tegan Halsey's goals. Well, I get in a lot of fights with my siblings, and I want to stop getting mad at them for little things in life. Well, I hope that I can become a better father and have patience, smiling more. That's what's going to take smiling. <laughs> Sometimes all you can do is smile when your resolutions hit the skids. I also write things on my mirror in the bathroom. It's kind of a mantra, I guess. So what are you going to write on your mirror? Be a good human, maybe. Ah, you got it. To be a better human means different things to different people. For the young, there's the fire of desire. Go to school, maybe, if I'm, like, get enough money to, like, pursue school. Just work towards it and keep doing things to get me towards it. The crystal ball is not what this soccer player has her eye on. I just want to give my 110% in my practices and my workouts just to make sure that I compete at my best level. I want to be a better person with my family. I don't spend much time with them anymore, you could say. I hope she grows up with love, lots of love. Emma is Don Samuelson's first grandchild. I quit making resolutions for myself. Right now, I just, I believe in helping others, you know, helping people take care of themselves. The beauty of a day like this, you see so many people reach out to each other to maintain what can be a fragile balance. Well, 2017 is going to be an epic year for us. Uh, the first thing is we're going to help another person live. I am donating my kidney in January. Jody Harskamp sees a brighter future for three of her co-workers' children. She's kind of attached to a machine, and so she kind of feels like a prisoner because she's like 12 hours on this machine. And so with me giving her my kidney, she'll be able to be free. To be free to live and love and face the future with a happy heart. Let's look into this and see what we can see. Oh, I see success in the new year and happiness. What do you think? I think so too. I love you. Oh, yeah. Hockey coaches tell you to keep your head up and skate to where the puck is going to be. 
And that's good advice on the ice and for our new year. Well, still to come, one man's story of survival. As she grew nearer on the trail, her head grew bigger and bigger. 14 years ago, Dan Bigley was mauled and blinded by a grizzly. Now he helps others embrace every moment. Thanks for coming. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. <laughs> I think they're open. Welcome to the final days of Toyotathon. Mom, Dad, what are you doing here? You can get 0% APR for 72 months on the new 2017 Corolla or lease Corolla for $159 a month during Toyotathon. You can get a great deal too during Toyotathon. Toyota, let's go places. You don't have to live in a big city to be a foster parent. You don't have to have a big house, a fancy car, or lots of money. What you need is a home. What you need is a heart that can open to a child who needs you. Won't you become a foster parent today? A child is waiting. Call 1-800-478-7307. At the core of everybody's membership in Rotary is the opportunity to have a feeling of significance in their communities. I think if everybody belonged to Rotary, there would be no wars in this world. It doesn't take a lot to be a Rotarian. One person can make a tremendous difference in the lives of another. Good morning, I'm Megan Mazurik. And I'm James Gaddis. Thank well, I came to Alaska to fulfill my dream of finally working on a morning show. It's the one thing I want to do. When I got here, it was just a, a man and his dog. Now I've got a few more priorities, a few more responsibilities. Life has changed for the best in ways that I, that I never imagined. I knew this would be, you know, one of those trips, one of those life-changing ventures coming up here, but I, I didn't think it would be anything uh, as fulfilling as this. We met Dan Bigley and his wife Amber at an international bear conference in downtown Anchorage this summer. As he signed autographs for his book, Beyond the Bear, his seeing eye dog, Guy, sat patiently. His book tells the story of how he was blinded in a bear attack, which happened the very day after he fell in love with Amber. He told her, I'll see you tomorrow, a promise he couldn't keep. On July 14th, 2003, uh, the last thing I ever saw was the bear that took my eyes. It was one of those beautiful bluebird days in Alaska. Um, probably just warm enough to take off your sweater and wear short sleeves and just enough breeze to keep the mosquitoes down. When suddenly my dog Maya lets out a little growl. And sure enough, about 30 feet in front of us on the trail stood a large grizzly. She turned immediately to face us, was stomping her foot, jumping up and down on her front paws, hair stood on end, huffing, puffing, growling. My friend John and I stood close together and raised our arms up high to make ourselves look big. When suddenly on the trail in front of us, the alders started shaking vigorously. And in no more than about 10 steps, uh, the totally unimaginable happened. And that is that with the shaking bushes now behind us, that directly in front of us on the trail, the bear came ripping wildly around the corner at missile speed. And in that moment, there was nothing left between the shaking bushes behind me and the bear, except for myself. And we didn't realize this at the time, uh, but in hindsight, after talking to enough people and, and putting the pieces of the story together, what we now realize is that the shaking bushes must have been where she had left her cubs. As she grew nearer on the trail, her head grew bigger and bigger, her eyes burning yellow with fury, her mouth agape. She had a hold of my leg and was pulling me out of the bushes. She then picked me up, 
by what we can only figure was my head, and then drug me off into the alders. And in hindsight, that might have been a mistake, uh, because the bear, who was only a short distance away, um, my call for help was too much sign of life. And so she returned, and the mauling continued. That's when she cocked her head sideways and bit down across my face from side to side and then chewed. That in one hand, there was the choice to let go of life. And it really seemed like that was a very easy choice to make in that moment. And it was that special kind of love, you know, that real primordial love that exists between a parent and a child. Perhaps the strongest I've I'd ever felt it. Um, and in that moment, I knew uh, that my decision was made, that I was going to fight for love. Dan Bigley says he doesn't blame the bear and he doesn't blame himself. He says he was in a bad place at a bad time. Still to come, Dan and his wife Amber are here to talk about how this experience has helped them motivate others to live for love. I just want cremation. Cremation specialist in Alaska. Can I have a service before cremation? Our staff is committed to serving your needs. I just want something basic. The simpler, the better. Specializing in simple cremations. Whatever your reasons are for choosing cremation, call Cremation Society of Alaska, 277-2777, or in the Valley, 373-8627, and on the web at alaskacremation.com. I was really nervous, borderline scared at the starting line at Mount Marathon. And I had done stories about it, I knew the mountain, but these are a whole different breed of runners. These Alaska trail runners, they're serious to look up and know, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get to the top of that and that feeling when you get to the top. It's changed my family's lifestyle because now we're out climbing mountains every weekend and there's just always somewhere new to go, somewhere else to explore another mountain to climb. What do we do now? Get your sound back. You're gonna need some form of proof that he's okay. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. It's what you do with your fear that matters. You and me, we're gonna get you back. You're gonna be safe. The Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium provides comprehensive health services for Alaska Native and American Indian people across our state. In addition to world-class care at the Alaska Native Medical Center, our work delivers health services for rural Alaska. From cutting-edge technology for the best care possible to modern construction of clean water systems and health clinics to health training and outreach that honors our culture, our vision is that Alaska Native people are the healthiest people in the world. Ben Bigley and his wife Amber continue to move beyond the bear. Although the journey to recover from the bear attack was long and painful, they use what they've learned to help others. Dan is a therapist, Amber a fitness counselor, and both are proud parents. A one, two, three, four. At the Bigley home, you'll find lots of examples of how to live with love. Sometimes I learn, I learn the more. They help each other every day. Dan has taught his son Alden to play music. And Alden? I helped Dad a lot matching socks. <laughs> Important when you're blind, but Dan sees a lot more than most people about how to overcome challenges. His main message, build a support network and live large. The more I engage, the bigger my life gets, and the bigger my life gets, the smaller my disability gets. A lesson he was forced to learn immediately after the bear attack. Once he was blinded, he thought it was over, but now he found out he can still live a life without being lonely, sad. And he didn't expect his new girlfriend, Amber, to marry him. I wouldn't want Amber or anybody, for that matter, to be with me out of a sense of, like, 
obligation. Like I just need to be focused on becoming a whole person, you know, which I think was the right thing to do at the time. Yet, like Amber, Amber couldn't let go. Throughout that time, like, had dreams of us getting married. It's weird. I totally did. But Amber wouldn't cut down any slack. Well, she pushed him hard. I lost 40 pounds myself. And still does. In the past year, both have embarked on a journey of personal fitness. And through this, you're like working your core, right? So. Dan has mostly used weights and has lost about 60 pounds. And with a healthier diet, he's headed off diabetes and high cholesterol. But he always faces it with a positive attitude, so. Um, it's true, and yeah. I'm not afraid to laugh when I fail. <laughs> Laughter is woven into daily life in this household. What's it like to grow up with a blind dad? Can't really see. <laughs> and Bigley says the key is to treat every challenge as a journey. I'm here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown. In fact, it's almost to the point to where those things kind of excite me, those challenges to where I'm outside of my comfort zone. That's where the stakes are highest. <laughs> nice, Alden. <laughs> And joining us now, Dan and Amber Bigley, to give us a head start mm -hmm. on meeting our challenges for 2017 and also to help us understand what it really means to, to live with love. And, of course, uh, let's talk about going uh, beyond the bear, but also look back at before the bear. Mm -hmm. You know, can you tell us a little bit about w where you were, what was your state of mind before this attack? Sure. Um... Well, I think, you know, for both Amber and I, we were both young. I was 25 at the time. I uh, had, you know, just moved up to Alaska and to Girdwood uh, about a year prior and uh, was really just kind of at the peak of, of life is what it felt like at the time. I had a job working with troubled kids at Alaska Children's Services and uh, working some odds and ends in Girdwood and um, really had just felt like I had found my, my home, my community, and loved all that Alaska had to offer in the outdoors. Well, your book, Beyond the Bear, is, of course, about this process of reinventing yourself. You know, I guess it's a hard thing. You seem so well-adjusted now to kind of go back in time and, and see what you went through. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, you know, there were some dark days and, and some tough times along the way for sure, uh, because so much of my identity was wrapped up in, you know, backcountry skiing and uh, fishing and kayaking. And, and so there was this sort of crisis of, you know, who am I and what do I like to do? And um, I think I started from the right place, which was, you know, I'd come so close to dying and realizing that I almost, you know, left this earth without a chance to experience love, without a chance to experience being a father or have a, a career. Um, and so I just started with the most basic goals of like finding love in my life, uh, working out a way to be a, 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 a good father um, and finding a way towards uh, a career that would bring meaning and purpose. Well, Amber, you know, you are the person that has to watch all of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've had to bear witness, and sometimes that is even harder on the person that has to see what your loved one is going through. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, but Dan, you know, approaches everything with a positive attitude, and he... Um, you know he's he's not, he's got a no quit attitude, um, so it's 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 great to be able to support that and be part of that. Um, but yeah, he inspires me too. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've else. even become a fitness counselor. So what have you learned about how to help people through helping Dan? Right. Well, you know I think it's definitely you want to celebrate the the small successes that you make. It's not all, all or nothing. It's not you know you don't have to, you know, have an immediate. Um, giant success or results or whatever it is, you know, celebrating the successes and loving yourself along the way um, and during the journey um, and really, you know, tapping into why those things are important to you. Um, I think that those are all really important. Yeah. Like early on, Amber would always celebrate those little successes with me, whether it was just making my own sandwich or, <laughs> yeah. you know, getting to the bus successfully or whatever the yeah. case was. <laughs> well, you know, in the book, you talk about sort of this, uh, uh, difficulty in having a relationship with your face. 
Mm -hmm. And in fact, you, there's a, a very moving passage about how a nurse approached you years later at, at Girdwood that apparently had been involved in some of your surgeries. And she said, that is like the most complicated, amazing surgery. I've never seen anything like that mm -hmm. since then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it, it was a process for sure of getting used to my new face. And, you know, I think whether it's a blessing or a curse, one interesting element to, you know, the story of how I moved beyond the bear is that I never saw my face post attack. Um, so the only way that I've gotten to know my face really is just through touch. And so once, you know, the wounds were starting to heal up, I spent quite a bit of time just exploring my face, which was completely reconstructed uh, pretty much from the top middle of my head down to my upper lip. And so getting to know it and also pretty aware of the fact that, you know, there were some deformities. You know, my right eye was bulging quite a bit bigger than my left for quite some time and was sunken down about an inch lower than my left eye. And so there were just uh, a lot of things that were tough to get used to. And over the years, you know, the swelling got better and I ended up having uh, a couple of re uh, reconstructive surgeries that assisted with uh, some of that. But it really, really more a matter of just adjusting and, and accepting sort of where I'm at. And well, Amber, you, you have beautiful children, <laughs> just absolutely you. beautiful children. But we live in a world where everybody is so conscious about how you look. I mean, and kids can be in a weird zone sometimes mm -hmm. and get strange notions and be self-conscious. How have your kids adapted to Dan's disfigurement? Right. You know, I don't know that they... I mean, they notice it, but he's just a normal dad to them and one that they're incredibly proud of. It's pretty neat when, you know, he comes to their school to do presentations on, you know, service animals or, you know, our kids are, are definitely very proud of him. And, um, and so I don't know that they see him differently than other kids see their dads. I mean, they, they are, he's dad and that's the normal. And there's a few little different things in our lives that, you know, maybe they're helping him match his socks or, you know, helping him find something, but for the most part, you know, they're, they're just really proud of, of their dad. And love well, Dan, how do you feel about sort of people being able to see you and love you for who you are, despite how you look? Right. I mean, what is that? You know, you know, is that a good message for our world now to just kind of stop looking at the surface of things? You know, one of the things I learned in the process of writing this book uh, with Deb McKinney, and she, she kind of taught me this, she, she would always say, you know, don't tell in your writing, show in your writing. And I think that there's so much to learn just in life in general uh, about showing rather than telling. And so like the whole idea of living with love or whatever, I think it starts, you know, with me. It starts with self-acceptance. It starts with self-love. And so I kind of act in the world in a way that obviously doesn't include visual information about what others look like. And so I treat most people the same, and that is uh, with kindness and acceptance. And uh, I hope that they would all offer, you know, my family and I the, the, the same, you know, You know, but we, we see you now sitting here, you know, you seem so adjusted you know, that a lot of people, when they reinvent themselves, they tend to expect perfection and they fall off the wagon uh, <laughs> because they can't achieve that. And I, I'm sure for you that the battle to cope with this bear attack is really not over, ever over. Right. No, I mean, it's definitely true. There are still challenges quite, you know, quite often, just like I think everybody has a bear in their lives of some form or fashion mm -hmm. that, you know, they would benefit from moving beyond. Um, I, again, I guess that for me, I go back to, I really set my goals in my life to be very achievable, and so I'm proud of what I've achieved, and mostly when I say that, I, I mean that I'm proud to have a wife that loves me, and, and we have a good relationship, and, you know, I'm proud to have healthy kids um, that, you know, we have a great relationship, and I'm proud of the work that I do, um, and, and those are all things that I feel like I have some amount of control over. Um, and then the things that come up in life that I, that I don't have control over, which, you know, indefinitely happens all the time, um, I still have my rocks, you know, my, my marriage and my kids and my family, uh, that not only are they there to support me, but I have to continue to be there uh, to love and support them. And so it just keeps, keeps us all moving in the right direction. And I imagine, Amber, that... Living with love means 
finding a, a support community to help you mm -hmm. live in love. Can you talk about the kind of support communities that you and Dan have built? Sure. Well, you know, we are both, you know, transplants to Alaska originally, so we don't have a lot of immediate family here. Um, uh, my sister lives here, but, um, you know, so we've developed a family amongst our friends, um, for sure. And then we've just developed uh, the whole community of support through our jobs, our employments, our, you know, health and fitness groups. Um, you know, and just are able to, um, yeah, have this incredible community of support that have supported us, him, um, this whole last 15, 16 years. Because most of us have a tendency to think we ought to do things alone. We're about out of time, Dan, but can you yeah. just give us some parting thoughts on what it means to live with love and how we can use that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just looking at yourself with honesty and trying to decide what are those things that, uh, about yourself that you would like to work to improve on. Practicing that self-acceptance for where you're at um, and then really connecting yourself with why. Why do you want to work to change some part of your life? What, why is it important to you? And staying connected to that why will give you the why power you need to be a better person in 2017. Mm -hmm. What is it that you hope uh, as we as a world achieve? You know, is it possible as a society that we can learn to live with love? Right. I, I think it starts certainly on the individual level. Again, kind of li living by example and, and being the world that you want to see, uh, that you want your kids to grow up in. Um, I know for us, we definitely do that within our own circle of friends and in our work as well. Um, you know, one of the things that I really appreciate about Amber's, you know, health and fitness um, business is the support that she offers people, the support that she's offered me throughout my entire transformation, not just for health and fitness, but really going back to how I move beyond the bear is something that we do not only within our businesses, but really um, to all people that we encounter. Is so this. our motto for 2017, live with love. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Great motto. Well, yeah. thank you. And from all of us at KTVA, have a happy new year, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>